Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm Professor John R. and I'm your instructor. In a previous video, I showed you some must-have accessories for your flex shaft. And that video was so well received, I decided I was going to give you a little bit more information about some other flex shaft tools. But this time, I'm going to focus on how you can use those tools in a decorative way to apply a cool finish to some of your metal pieces. Now, I'm going to focus on three different attachments for your flex shaft. The first one is a Mizzy wheel. Now, a Mizzy wheel is generally used for grinding away burrs or clipped off pieces from castings and things like that. In other words, it's a very workhorse sort of tool that doesn't really do anything decorative normally. The second one that I'm going to show you is this one. It's an abrasive wheel. And the abrasive wheel sometimes is just used to knock away dirt and grime or other debris that's stuck to the piece of metal that you're working with in order to clean it up so that you can continue working. And lastly, I'm going to show you how to use a silicone cylinder to make a very decorative, sort of almost romantic vintage sort of finish. Okay, now remember, anytime that you use the, the flex shaft, you need to wear eye protection because the rate of speed that that thing turns at could knock something into your eye before you even know it. So be safe. All right, so let's deal first with the Mizzy wheel. Now, let me apply this to the handle of my flex shaft. Remember, you always want to use your chuck key to lock a tool in tightly so that it doesn't slip out. And this one is applied to a screw-on mandrel, so make sure that that mandrel is screwed down tight so the Mizzy wheel doesn't slip. Okay, now I've got some samples here, uh, pre-polished pieces of copper, and this one's kind of fun. You're going to move very quickly and you're going to move your, your hands in such a way that you hit the piece of metal from a variety of angles. So I'm going to just grip it and start making some cuts. Now, by changing the direction with the tool, I'm able to give these little facets that I've cut into the piece the opportunity to shine independently when light hits it from various directions. This could be a great finish applied to, say, an earring. All right, let's move on. Let's try next with the abrasive wheel. Now, the abrasive wheel, like I said, is really sort of a cleanup kind of tool but we can use it to make a really nice matte finish on the surface of our metal. Now you notice that I'm starting with highly polished samples and I'm working on top of that finish. Now you can pre-polish your work if you like, but for this particular piece, you might be able to actually get away with a surface that isn't completely brought to a nice rouge finish. All right, so on my sample, you notice that I ran in a, just in a straight direction to create sort of a linear effect. So let's do that first. Okay, so light pressure applied with the wheel to our surface going in one direction just creates some nice decorative lines. But something that I found out that I thought was kind of interesting was when you go in one direction diagonally and then the other, you kind of create almost like a basket weave effect that looks like it has a little movement to it. So let's apply that to the rest of this piece. So you can see that was really quick and easy to apply and it gives sort of an interesting effect on the surface of your metal. Okay, the last one I want to talk about is the silicone cylinder. Now the silicone attachments for the flex shaft are generally used for light grinding away of small areas or for maybe pre-polishing before you go to a buffing motor. And 
this particular piece you might use to flatten a, a surface or maybe smooth around a corner. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus just on the very tip of the tool and I'm going to apply pressure with the tip repeatedly moving across the piece. Now, you can overlap this finish or you can leave areas of negative space that show another finish that you might have left on the surface. In other words, in the example that I have on the board, I had a high polished surface and I wanted to leave some of that to contrast against the the grinding of the end of the silicone. So I'm using the hardest silicone tip that I have in my supply. Okay, so I'm going to change my grip and I'm going to give this a little bit of speed and then we're going to get started. So here we go. Okay, so I just made three little circular shapes on the bottom of this piece. When you do this, you're going to have to really pay attention and hold your tool steady as you grind across your surface. And like I said, you don't need to leave spaces, you can overlap. These types of surfaces are very popular in terms of contemporary sculpture and jewelry design. But one thing that I would highly recommend to you after you're done working is you may want to apply a piece of tape to the back of your sample and record what type of tool you used in order to create that finish. And another tip that I want to suggest is storing your samples in individual little plastic bags like this one. That way you're not going to damage them in a toolbox or when you store them and they're always at the ready if you want to show them to a client that you're trying to recommend an interesting surface finish to, for their piece. I hope you like this tip. You can find many more like it on the onlinejewelryacademy.com or here on our OJA YouTube playlist. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and don't forget about fan funding on Patreon. Thank you very much.